devotees, devotees can join in as we are doing the Mangala Charan. Right. Could you do the Mangala Acharan? Okay. Om Agnana Timirandasya Gnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurul Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Padantikam one day, Ham Shri Gurum, Shri Yuta Padakamalam, Shri Gurum, Vaishnavam Scham, Shri Rupam Sagrajatam, Sahagana Ragunatam, Vitam Tam Sajivan, Sadvaitam Savutam, Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Chakarpate Deshna Gopika Kanta Aradha Kanta Namustite Tapta Kancha Nagaurangi Rade Vrindavaneshwari Vishapanu Sute Devi Namami Hari Priye Vanchakal Pataru Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Bacha Patitana Avane Hare Krishna Prabhu, Danvat Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances uh, and on, on behalf of everybody who have joined this group and are about to join Prabhuji. Prabhuji, we are reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. We are on Canto 1, Chapter 8. Chapter 8 are the prayers by Queen Kunti and today we are on text 45, Prabhuji. So I hand over to you, Hare Krishna. Yes, what was the number of the verse? 45, Prabhuji. Okay, that's what I have. Narayananda Maskritya Naram Taiva Narotamam Devim Sarasutim Vyasam Tato Dayam Udiraya Nasta Pareshu Padreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavad Gutama Loke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishkutu So would you like to read the Sanskrit or someone? Okay, would anybody like to read the Sanskrit of text 45 or should I continue? Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, I'll, I'll uh, read the text. Tambadham iti upa mantra pravishya gacha sahvayam shritascha Swapuram Yeshyan Premna Rajna Nivaritya. Hare Krishna. Can I do the word to word, Prabhuji? Yes, please, or someone else. Anybody would like to do the word to word? Text 45? Yes, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Tam, Tam, all those. All those. Badam, Badam. accepted. Badam. Accepted. Iti thus. Iti thus. Upamantria subsequently informed. Upamantria subsequently informed. Pravishya entering. Pravishya 
entering. Gajasa, Gajasa Vayam, the palace of Hastinapur. Gajasa Vayam, the palace of Hastinapur. Striya Cha, other ladies. Striya Cha, other ladies. Swapuram, own Swap. residence. Swapuran, own residence. Yasyan, while starting for. Yasyan, yeah. while starting for. Premna, with love. Premna, with love. Rag, Rajna, by the king. By Rajna, the king. by the king. Nivaritaha, stopped. Nivaritaha, stopped. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Would you, would you like us to read the translation and purport? Please. Would anybody like to read the translation and purport? Okay, I can read the translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Yeah. Thus, accepting the prayers of Srimati Kunti Devi, the Lord subsequently informed other ladies of his departure by entering the palace of Hastinapur. But upon preparing to leave, he was stopped by King Yudhishthir, who implored him lovingly. Purport. No one could make Lord Krishna stay in Hastinapur when he decided to start for Dwarka. But the simple request of King Yudhishthir that the Lord remain there for few days more was immediately effective. This signifies that the power of King Yudhishthir was loving affection, which the Lord could not deny. The Almighty Lord, uh, Almighty God, is thus conquered only by loving service and nothing else. He is fully independent in all his dealings, but he voluntarily accepts obligations by the loving affection of his pure devotee. Hare Krishna. Over to you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. So I offer my respects unto all the Vaishnav devotees of the Lord who are just like desire to fulfilling the desires of everyone <clears throat> by giving us the transcendental holy names of Krishna. So we are, we are hearing again about how powerful is bhakti, how powerful is love of Krishna. Or what can control God? What could possibly control God? What could interest him? He has everything. He is everything. So what can we give him? There's nothing we can give him that he needs. But he does enjoy our voluntary respect and affection for him. And the pure love and devotion of the completely awakened devotees or the nitya siddha, the eternally liberated soul, uh, is so strong that Lord Krishna agrees to act according to their desires by his choice. So that's how powerful is bhakti. Uh, it is said, therefore, that in one sense, bhakti or loving devotion is more powerful than God himself. Uh, who knows, uh, who remembers, uh, who is the personification, the complete manifestation of bhakti? Who is that personality who personifies loving devotion? Prahlad Maharaj, Prabhuji. Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj. Yes. yes, he is one. Any other suggestions? Try Hare Radharani. Who? Radharani. Yes, Srimati Radharani. Um, yeah, the, uh, all of the pure devotees, just like the 10 Mahajans, Lord Shiva, uh, 
Mahesh Maharaj, Dhuva Maharaj, Pallad Maharaj, Bhishma Dev, Janaka Maharaj. These are all uh, fully pure devotees who are awake in their relationship with Lord Krishna. But Srimati Radharani is the fullest, unsurpassable personification of divine love for Krishna. And she, uh, as we hear the transcendental Leela, she and the gopis, because of their love, Lord Krishna uh, acts uh, by his choice as a submissive uh, lover. And for the queens of Dwarka, Lord Krishna acts uh, like the loving, devoted husband. Uh, it is natural in the relationship of man and wife. And the wife is sometimes asking or demanding things of the husband. And out of affection, the husband agrees, yes, I will do this, I will do this. So it's on the basis of the, the loving affection. And the same is true with Lord Krishna and the queens of Dwarka. We always want to point out if anyone asks that these are not ordinary uh, women, for sure. Some of them are coming to that point after many births of practicing bhakti yoga. Some of them are eternally liberated souls. So they are not uh, ordinary. So therefore, it is said by Lord Brahma that there are, there may be someone who says they understand Lord Krishna completely. But for me, I can only understand a small, tiny portion of Lord Krishna's glory. So if sometimes we think, well, I can't understand Krishna, well, even Lord Brahma cannot fully understand Lord Krishna. So we should not be too impatient or unhappy, or uh, think that it's a terrible thing that we can't seem to understand Lord Krishna's uh, divine activities and leela and form. Even the greatest of demigods, Lord Brahma, doesn't fully understand. We, we have some difficulty sometimes trying to accept and understand even humans who show some magical power, some mystical power. So on the path of bhakti yoga, we may know there are two uh, main categories of bhakti on the, on the uh, path of progress. So what is the first stage of bhakti call. Does anyone remember? Does any, anyone remember? There's two types of bhakti yoga, broad category. No one? That's okay. So the, the first category is regulative devotion or uh, devotion in awe and reverence. And when that, when we become uh, more awakened, then it uh, changes into more and more pure devotional service with spontaneous attraction. So all the, the, the details about bhakti and the different stages of bhakti, uh, many, many examples of bhakti, it is there in the nectar of devotion, or the bhakti prasamrita sindhu. And Srila Prabhupada uh, instructed that, or advised that devotees should read that seven times, because it is the, uh, he called it the law book of devotional service. So does anyone remember who originally wrote that nectar of devotion?
I think our moderator is not moderating. You know, I don't know. Uh, so I'll, I'll just continue. But Sri Rupa Goswami, uh, Lord Chaitanya, the most intimate uh, devotees of Lord Chaitanya were the six Goswami. We may know their names, Sri Rupa Goswami, Janakan Goswami, Raghunath Das, Jiva Goswami, Raghunath Bhatta, Gopal Bhatta, Goswami. These were all um, most intimate associates uh, who were living in the, in the renounced order of life. Most of them uh, in Vrindavan. And Lord Chaitanya, he instructed them to put down in writing uh, with evidence from the Vedic scriptures all about Krishna Bhakti. So they did that. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself only gave us uh, eight verses of the Shish Ashtakam and perhaps uh, other prayer. But he left it, he instructed the six Goswamis to actually uh, set down in writing uh, the science of bhakti yoga. So they're very, very exalted pure devotees. We can uh, offer our prayers to them and ask their favor. And it is understood that uh, most of them were actually eternally liberated souls, eternal divine associates uh, of the gopis in Goloka Vrindavan, maidservants of the gopis or assistants. In the spiritual world, Lord Krishna uh, has, we may say, primary devotees who serve him uh, directly most of the time, who offer different services to him. And they have assistants, and the assistants have assistants, and those assistants have assistants. Uh, so we, we right now today, we are in this line of Lord Chaitanya and the six Goswami. Uh, uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, the spiritual master of his divine grace, Iskand founder, Karya Srila Prabhupada, uh, is understood to be uh, what is called a, a Manjari, or one of the assistants of the Gopi, specifically Lalita, Lalita Gopi. There are eight main gopis uh, in the conjugal rasa with Lord Krishna, and they have made service. So we can understand that through the line of parampara, through our mentors, through our uh, spiritual master, all the way through uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj, we are uh, factually connected to Lord Krishna. It's not, uh, it's not just someone's imagination or it's an idea or it's a theory. Uh, we are connected uh, through Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and the other six, go, other six go Swamis, associates of Lord Chaitanya. We are definitely connected to Sri Sri Radha Krishna and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we should. Uh, of course, take advantage of that and try and remember, even though we may not understand it or feel it, we are connected through this parampara. And the great pure devotees, uh, like Srila Bhakti Siddhanta and Srila Bhakti Thakur and Goraka Shoradas Babaji and the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, they are uh, open to hear our prayers to them or Lord Krishna understands our prayers to them and reciprocate. Uh, because we may think, well, what is the use of offering prayers to someone who lived uh, 550 years ago? So that is a material perspective. Uh, with uh, any of them, we can certainly connect with any of them. And without a doubt, Lord Krishna knows our heart. He knows when we are 
offering respect <clears throat> when we are offering puja to the pure devotees of Lord Krishna, and Lord Krishna blesses us. It is not, it doesn't require physical presence although that is nice. So Maharaj Yudhis there, he was, had so much bhakti, love, uh, that Lord Krishna was attra attracted and he, uh, allowed himself to be submissive. Uh, Maharaj Yudhis there is asking Lord Krishna after the battle of Kurukshetra and the funeral ceremonies to stay for some more time. And, Lord Krishna agreed just because of the love of Maharaj Yudhisthira. We, we see in ordinary life, a young child can control the mother or the father. The father and mother will agree to do something, even something which is hard to do, uh, out of love for the child. So the love of the child is controlling the, uh, the parents. So in our stage, the first stage is Vaidhi Bhakti, or practicing obediently uh, the different rules and regulations with the purpose in mind. We should have the purpose in mind, uh, and we should keep it uh, in our mind that I'm on the path of developing love of Krishna. And uh, that, will, that will guide our intelligence and that will guide our values. Uh, although Srila Prabhupada said it, at this at the stage of Vadi Bhakti, it is not wrong to pray to Krishna for things that we need uh, when we are in difficulty. That's part of the process where we develop a relationship by doing that. But ultimately, we should uh, keep it in our mind and have the desire that I want to develop a pure affection. We get what we want. That's why. You know, the Lord Krishna will, he does. He fulfills uh, all of our desires, everyone's desire. And Krishna is... Uh, Bhokturam Jagatapasam Savaloka Maheshwaram Suradam Savabhutana Yajgatva Shantam Rititi. He is the supreme uh, personality of Godhead. Param Brahma, Param Dhamma, Pavitram, Paramam Uttama. Uh, Param Dhamma, he is the supreme abode, the supreme spiritual personality. Param Dhamma, Param Brahma, Pavitram, he's completely pure. Paramam Uttama. He's the supreme person. Uh, so we uh, serve obediently uh, with respect and hopefully some appreciation. Uh, and then as we go on associating with pure devotees, go on associating with people who actually love Lord Krishna and we follow the process, and we keep our desire because we'll get what we want. If we are only serving uh, Krishna to get some temporary thing, uh, only that I, I want this better job, so I'm going to serve Lord Krishna very carefully and do things that please him so I can get a better job uh, or a good wife, a good husband, uh, whatever. Uh, then our devotional service will, is subject to break because once we get that, once if once uh, if our desire is fulfilled, then it should be an impetus of affection. Oh, Krishna, through this, uh, however he fulfills our desire, uh, he has arranged, he has granted that my desire is fulfilled. Oh, what can I do for Krishna? So we develop love, uh, the beginning stages of love. And as we appreciate Krishna more and more, we will want to do things automatically, whether he gives or doesn't give. So that uh, next stage of bhakti or category 
is Raganuga Bhakti, which is spontaneous. But just as a river flows down to the ocean, so our love automatically, our uh, affection automatically flows towards Krishna, and we want to do things for him. And, uh, and that means, of course, uh, serving and trying to please his devotees. It is a, a neophyte or very beginning stage of devotion to only focus on God and not understand that he appreciates all of his devotees, and therefore I should appreciate all of his devotees. Very important. And as our, uh, as we continue following the process, most of which primarily is the is the shravanam kirtana, the hearing and chanting uh, about Krishna, singing. Then our own devotion will gradually um, flower. It will awaken more and more and more. Shri Prabhupada would sometimes say that we are the, the those who are on the path of devotion are first class prisoners. In a prison, you might have different types or categories of prisoners, first class, second class, third class, uh, just like uh, fruit or vegetables. There may be premium, very, very high quality uh, fruit, and then secondary level, and then third level. So uh, first class prisoner, means that we are, uh, we want to be obedient. You know, in a prison, you have prisoners that are rebellious. They regularly cause problems. They're rude, uh, unpleasant to the uh, prison staff, angry. And then there's other prisoners who uh, they uh, understand that they've made a mistake. And therefore, it's their own fault that they're in prison, and they take advantage to study something. So when they get out, they study law or some other subject, and they uh, are favorable to the government, to the police, to the uh, managers of the prison. So that's, that's us. Uh, we are still inside a material body. We are all still experiencing the actions or reactions of our past sinful activities, which are sometimes uh, challenging uh, or painful. What can we do? We are the ones who have put ourselves in this situation uh, of wanting to enjoy separate from Krishna long ago. Uh, uh, we have put ourselves in a position of having performed sinful activities and now there's some reaction uh, so we're 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 called uh, first class prisoner and that's uh, that's a good thing to remember yes i'm a devotee but i i'm uh, you know i'm not an eternally liberated soul i am not i have a history of sinful action the fact that i have a material body indicates that i've made serious mistakes. Uh, so a, a first-class prisoner in a prison will actually appreciate the, uh, the prison staff, assuming they're, <laughs> they're not uh, abusive. Uh, instead of being angry, you know, the, the third-class prisoner is cursing the government, cursing the police, cursing their, they're cursing everyone but themselves. It's not very good character. It's understandable that when we are suffering, it's not easy to have a good attitude. Uh, but if we have done something, you know, suppose we overeat our, our, our parents, they cook something for us, and we eat so much, and then we're, we feel very sick the next day. Whose fault is that? that, that that's our fault. And we certainly shouldn't have a bad attitude or, or uh, let our uh, pain 
spill over to our parents. You know, sometimes a, a, a wife or a husband will have uh, a rough day or a period of days that are difficult and it's difficult, but we shouldn't take it out on our wife or husband or children. Uh, somehow, I, this is my responsibility, what I'm experiencing, and no one deserves uh, to suffer for it. No one else deserves to suffer for it. Unless you know, it, we were attacked by someone and some criminal or someone stole something from us, and then, then we have to take action so that uh, they are disciplined and uh, they reform. So this helps us to remain more patient uh, and, and more peaceful in our life. It is said that those who are proud, it is very difficult for them to perform austerity because the proud person is thinking, why should I have to suffer? Uh, everything should be perfect at every moment. There should be no uh, difficulty. And they think so much about themselves. So it's difficult for them to uh, suffer quietly uh, or to what to speak of voluntarily accept some difficulty. But as devotees, uh, hopefully more and more we understand and accept as we have discussed in other classes that whatever difficulty or challenge I'm experiencing uh, the only person responsible is the person looking in the mirror back at me. That's the only person. So by understanding this, and of course following sadhana, we're, we're able to be uh, much more peaceful and less emotionally disturbed or angry. Uh, same thing. So, this is a valuable uh, consideration that we, we've talked about before because we don't want to become angry and upset with anyone for no good reason. And we certainly don't want to become offensive to Krishna or our spiritual master or other devotees. And if somehow we, we know that we're really not in a good mood, then we should be careful, maybe for the day or maybe for some number of days. I don't uh, get too close to other, other devotees because uh, you know, this is an extreme situation where we're, we could uh, commit offenses because of our disturbed mind. A human life is meant for having as peaceful a mind as possible so we can think straight and think clearly and make the right decision. It's so important, our mental health. Without good mental health, we can make decisions that cause us more suffering in the future. We're not able, uh, we have less ability to control our senses, control our desires. So life, our life should be arranged as best as we can, if not today, then as soon as possible, to be as simple and easy as we can. And that can be an austerity. Uh, you know, understanding that uh, to not have so many things and, and uh, to not spend so much money or, or have things that cost me a lot of money, such as a large payment on a vehicle or a large payment on a house or accepting some kind of job which is uh, very stressful. Uh, you know, so austerity means that for the benefit of my spiritual health, for the benefit of my future love of God and going back to Godhead, I'm not going to, to put myself in a position like that. And we may feel a little bit bad about that. You say, oh, I really wanted this bigger house. I really wanted this thing. Uh, so it, it, it's a question of our value. What do we value? So 
So that, therefore, it is said that Brahmins and those who are on the path of, of spirituality, they voluntarily accept austerity. Like here, here's a simple example. Uh, it's nine o'clock at night and I have a choice. I could eat uh, you know, a big plate of prasadam and I won't, be, <laughs> I won't be able to function in the morning uh, or not. So I really want to eat all this food, but it won't be good for me in the future. It won't be good for my spiritual health. And so we voluntarily accept the bottom. You know, we put up with our, our disturbed mind or our, our unsatisfied desire, which we all do already. Uh, those of us who have children, we, we know how that is. Our children sometimes want something and they're demanding it. And if we are good parents, we don't always give in. And there, there can be a lot of uh, a lot of noise, and it can be a botheration. Um, you know, without a doubt, parents give in just so that they can have an easier time of it. I don't have to hear this child crying. I don't have to put up with this. Uh, so you know, making decisions often requires some austerity or voluntarily accepting some difficulty. It's very hard to get anywhere in life. And usually people don't get anywhere in life without being willing to, to suffer, to put it simply, to accept being uncomfortable for a short while. So we're, we're discussing all these things uh, with the idea in mind of being able to stay on this path of bhakti uh, for all of this life. And uh, so that we can also experience as time goes on, the deeper stages of uh, Krishna bhakti. So I'll stop here and we can have some discussion. Question? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, thank you very much. I really um, uh, understood the example of the prisoners of the first class, second class, and third class. And also today, I understood the meaning of austerity. I just, I thought austerity would be just fasting and um, uh, doing the japa. But now I have understood that even taking a job that allows you to um, be on Krishna consciousness, even if it is a lower paid job, uh, is an austerity. So uh, thank you very much, Prabhuji, for... Uh, that, is an, that is an act of love, just like mm -hmm. as we discussed. Sacrifice. Krishna knows it. Oh, you... And he will reciprocate. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. I have a few questions. One of them is, so uh, on the path of developing love for Krishna is our goal. And sometimes we feel... Um, very enthused and we uh, we feel we are in love with Krishna and then there are times when we are not so how do we explain that I mean are we doing um, obviously we are doing something wrong because if you loved somebody you would love them all the time but especially um, us and I don't know about the others but uh, I feel enthused sometimes and sometimes I don't so up and down up and down, yes, Prabhuji. Well, we are on the path of, of awakening our original love of Krishna, our original consciousness, and we've been thinking differently for a very long time. You know, it's uh, just as if you have a pet dog and uh, you've neglected, you, you haven't trained it to be quiet, haven't trained it to listen to you. And then after four or five years, you think, oh, I, I should, I have to fix it. <laughs> it's going to be difficult. There's going to be good days and there's not going to be, there's going to be not such good days. But eventually the dog will hopefully uh, settle in. But we are dealing with our mind and our intelligence, the modes of nature. It takes time. Uh, there is a, 
what's called the thought patterns, they're, the deep ones are called some scars. Just like there are men, perhaps women, but there are men who have uh, horrible desires to exploit women or even exploit children. And I can't, I don't know about most, but uh, many, many of them, they don't want it. They don't like it. They don't know where these weird desires come from. They feel like they're cursed. But what's that? So that's called a samskara. It means a thinking pattern or a desire, which is like burned in, uh, hardwired. And it is hardwired. You can't fix those things so easily. They take time. They take time. Uh, so the one, one good thing, many good things, but we are not just trying to bend our, we're not just trying to straighten out a crooked tree, but we actually do love Krishna in our original consciousness. Underneath this crooked mind, this monkey mind, is our self, our soul. And as we practice and show Krishna we really do want to be a devotee, he will reciprocate and the uh, the crooked monkey of our mind will straighten out more and more so we have to be tolerant patient with ourselves yeah, we've discussed about that uh, upadesh amrita the book of instruction so one of them is to be uh, it means we have to be both patient and enthusiastic at the same time so we have to be realistic. I'm going to be enthusiastic uh, to lose this weight, but it's not going to be tomorrow. So uh, if we give up our enthusiasm, we we won't be successful. Uh, so we have to be we have to have confidence. So that's another one of the six principles that are favorable to bhakti: being patient, being enthusiastic, being confident. Does anyone uh, remember? Has anyone heard the example that? is given with regard to achieving uh, the result, final result of bhakti uh, with patience? It's an odd question. Uh, so, and, and the answer may sound a little funny, uh, perhaps, or odd, but the example was given that just like a woman becomes married and she wants a child. So assuming the husband is a responsible person, you know, he will want to make sure that there's enough money and everything is uh, set so that, that uh, so they can raise the child properly and not lose their mind. Uh, so she has to wait. That no, I really don't think this is the right time. She may have, you know, there may be a discussion like that. Uh, so, but she, but there's confidence that if I just go on in my responsibilities as a wife and do course, I will have my child or children. So that's the, so that confidence that I see so many pure devotees in the past. I see advanced devotees recently and now. And uh, so I have confidence that if I do this, just like we get a prescription from the doctor, if we don't have confidence, we, we may not follow it very strict. One day we're following the diet, the next day we don't follow because we don't really believe it uh, as much as we, we might. But if we really believe the doctor, yes, I take this, my uh, sickness will go away, then we'll do it and we'll stick to it. And we have confidence. So that that is, as they say, a 64 million pound uh, object to have to have confidence obviously is so valuable you can you can uh, secure your position in bhakti so where do we get what helps solidify our confidence who has heard something about that where do we get confidence or faith mm -hmm. How can we improve our faith?
Hare Krishna. By association with devotees. Association with devotees? Is that yes. what you said? Yes, yeah. Prabhu. By association. Yeah. So Lord Chaitanya was directly asked, uh, how can I develop faith? And the immediate answer was associating with devotees. And we know that does not mean just being in a sangha at someone's house or a program or being at the temple, but it means to hear, uh, hear uh, from pure devotees, and especially very, very advanced devotees. That is another instruction in that book, uh, that there are different levels of devotees, and we should be careful to uh, have enough association with the topmost devotees, because they're uh, their devotion, it will rub off on us for one thing. And we will also hear instructions that will help us to be successful. So yes, association with devotees. And something else is that by following the process, we get confirmation. Yes, uh, it's said in the Bhagavad Gita, if I live, uh, if I adjust my life in a more suffolk way, then my lust and my greed and anger will uh, become less, much less. And I did it, and it's true. I find that by meditating on Lord Krishna, uh, my mind becomes more peaceful, my passions are quieted, I become more attracted to him. It works. So by following the process, uh, we also get confidence. We get confirmation. Some other, uh, uh, Scott, did you have another question, uh, Kirtika? Does anybody else have another question or any comments? Okay, then I can ask my second question. Ruji, I've seen a lot of mothers, um, they carry their work home in the sense in their mind and then they are frustrated. I mean, even father, parents, both fathers and mothers. And then they take it out on the children or on their partners or in the relationship. So it's easy for us to say here that uh, uh, it is your doing. I mean, you, you, you have that business and it didn't go well and it's your problem. But how do we, how do we uh, counsel them and how do we tell them not to take it out on the children? I mean, we cannot... Um, so yeah. they have to... How do we explain uh, it to them? Well, I mean, ultimately, when we are in sattva guna, the more we are in sattva guna, uh, the more qualities of goodness and peace we'll have. We'll also be able to think more peacefully and thoughtfully. Uh, and Krishna will guide us, uh, how to speak. Uh, another way that we could answer that question is to... Uh, it's, it's communication. Uh, how to communicate with anyone so you, you can get your desires fulfilled. So you can get what you want. Just like you want to ask for a raise from uh, your employer. You don't do it right after you made some big mistake. That's uh, unintelligent. You, know? you want to do something, oh, they're happy with you. Maybe even you wait until they have lunch first thing in the morning, you think how to do it. So I'm going to suggest, you know, this is not in the scripture, uh, but we, do, we, we learned so many practical things, uh, utilitarian things that help our devotional life. So there's something, uh, if you look for it on the internet, it's called nonviolent communication. Uh, it's also, it's NVC, perhaps NVC.org, but nonviolent communication. And uh, another name, it's called compassionate communication. And it was, uh, it was taught, I mean, these principles, they're, they're, they're common everywhere, but there's a particular system that's put down into a, a simple way, a simple format. 
uh, by someone who worked in uh, politics and uh, saw so many meetings between countries and districts. And so how to communicate desires, how to communicate with someone so they will uh, uh, react in the way that we would like. So the uh, you know, one, one major principle is, uh, I mean, there, there's a few, but one is you don't begin a conversation attacking the person. You know, you are uh, such a mindless, inconsiderate idiot coming home and yelling at the children. <laughs> That's not, it might, and sometimes we do have to speak a little pinching, but it's better uh, when the person's in, in a good, when you think that you can do so, maybe you wait till the next day and you express how you felt. I'm not sure you understand how I feel when you come home and it seems you're really upset and getting on the children for things I don't see they deserve. And I feel very pained at heart that you're so upset and the children are upset and I feel so pained because usually as a rule, when people, other people can understand that we're in pain or that we're unhappy, it will move them. Oh, I didn't realize you, you felt like that. So, there, so that's just one example. There's, it's a very short set of, of principles. There's even a workbook of exercises that couples can do, that parents can do, to learn how to communicate in a way that we can get our desires to build our needs, our needs fulfilled. Like in that instance, I'm not sure you, you know how badly I felt. I really have a need uh, that there's peace in the house and you're happy and the children are happy and that need is not being fulfilled. So can we talk about it? So anyway, nonviolent communication, uh, compassionate communication, and if it, if it can work in, in governmental levels, because you can imagine two, two countries, two ambassadors who are really uh, upset about something. So they have to, they have to talk and you know, I'm gonna use the word a professional manner. They, ha they have to talk in a, in a controlled way so they can figure it out. So they don't blow each other up with nuclear bombs. Or in a family, how important is it to learn how to communicate? Because we all know how how arguments and discussions can go south very quickly and they become so painful. And we're thinking, over what? How did we get here? And it was because we uh, you know, were perhaps passionate or the other people, or everyone was just too hot-headed you know, to learn how to uh, say, I have to excuse myself. I don't think I'm going to speak to you in the way that I really should. Let's get back after 20 minutes. Let's get back after a couple of, to be able to do that, which requires, of course, commitment of everyone, whoever it may be. It may be devotees living in the temple and the temple president. It may be mentors and they, who they mentor, it could be anything. Uh, to be committed to the relationship. I do want our countries to be at peace, so we're gonna blow each other up. So, so if there's commitment, because sometimes people aren't committed or they aren't committed enough. You know, there's sometimes people self, they wanna leave the relationship. And so they, Krishna gives them the intelligence how to say things that just sticks it to the end and they're divorced before you know it. Because that's what they want. So anyways, uh, that's, a, that's a suggestion. And the first thing, of course, is that we ourselves, uh, and uh, as far as we're able, others are in Sapaguna. So, uh, you know, like we may suggest to uh, a child, or, or uh, I say child, a young adult, uh, who always seems to be not in a good mood and irritable and snappy. 
that the same thing. I'm not sure you realize how I feel when you're like that. I understand that you're not deliberately doing Perhaps you should uh, take rest earlier. You know, figure it out, what, how to fix it. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Are there any other questions or comments? I know we are running out of time. I just, I just want to point out, as I have in the past, how practical is Bhagavad Gita that you have two people, you have a person who's having challenges. Uh, the first thing is you know, the peace of mind, which is Bhagavad Gita, and being in Satvaguna and following the principles. Are you following the principles as strictly as you think you should? And, uh, you know, are you sleeping enough or are you sleeping too much? Just to understand, because otherwise it's going to be difficult. You know, sometimes people are so disturbed. The first thing is forget about a discussion. Let's just get more peace of mind. Then we can have a discussion. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Um, can I request Peter Muli? Peter Prabhu, can I request you to end this session? There are no more questions or comments and we are running out of time. Peter Prabhu? Okay, maybe he's... Uh, yeah, let, me, let me just add something, just like in ISKCON, like other organizations, there are management training centers with leadership training. There's all kinds of training. So, Training how to communicate that. That's a big one. Yes, Prabhuji, good idea. Yeah, for Krishna's service. Let me become an expert negotiator. Yeah. Continue, Peter Prabhu. Hi. Also, all the devotees assembled in the group. Sorry, I'm on the road. So, I just ask for the devotees. Please let us meet ourselves and have a great glorification of the internal Prabhu. Prabhu, thank you for the class. Very inspiring. To apply what you've learned in our personal life. Very Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Rama, 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 Hare Rama, Rama, is Grace Dina Sharan Prabhuji Ki? Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Prabhuji, for your time. You are always so regular. Thank you. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Everyone be well. Hare Krishna. You too, Prabhuji.